All right, next up, Christian Schaffner will talk about the garden hose model. Thank you very much, Dan. So we, are, um, all four of us, are Amsterdam-based, and I'm um, going to tell you something about the garden hose model. And no, I don't mean these kind of models that you get when you search for images for garden hose model and turn safe search off. But what I mean is the following. So we have Alice and Bob. They're chilling out in their gardens. They're neighbors, and their gardens are separated by an alley of trees, so they can see each other. And of course, as good gardeners, they have, uh, they're both well equipped. They have a nice pile of garden house available to them. So they both get some in inputs. Alice gets an n-bit string x, Bob gets an n-bit string y, and their goal is to compute the binary fu a Boolean function. As it turns out, their gardens are connected by k water pipes. And what they can do is they can take their hose, and depending on the input, they can connect some of them of their, their ends of the pipes together. So notice there's only one-to-one -one connections allowed. No, no fancy stuff here. And Bob, he can do the same. He looks at his Y and he wires up some of his ends of the pipes. And additionally, we say that Alice has a, has a water source and she can choose to connect that source as well to one of the pipes. So once they're done with all this wiring, the, Alice is going to turn on the water and the water will flow here in this example through to the second pipe and then it will come back here on that side and then it will come out on Alice's side. And it's actually easy to see that it will always come out either on Alice's side or on Bob's side. You cannot create <laughs> any deadlock in this kind of scheme. And what we're going to say is that if it comes out on Alice's side, then the Boolean function that we want to compute is, is going to be zero. And if the water comes out on Bob's side, we're going to call the Boolean function to be, to be one. So what I've just shown you is actually uh, just a simple mechanical model of computing a Boolean function in the garden hose model. So just to go over it quickly again, you look at your input, you can wire up your ends of the pipe, and then um, Bob does the same depending on why. The, the water is turned on, and depending on which side the water comes out, we, the Boolean function is either zero or one. And of course, now we can start asking questions. So how many pipes are required to compute certain functions? So one thing we can do is we can give upper bounds, we can give constructions. For example, it's not so hard to see that actually two to the n plus one pipes are okay to um, compute any arbitrary function. Um, we can also go for lower bounds um, that are mostly counting arguments. Um, so for example, we, we can show that um, any kind of reasonable function needs some uh, n over log n number of pipes. And uh, to get you started thinking about this model, I, I would like to propose uh, a good night puzzle to you. And so, once you're in bed tonight, take a minute or two or three and think about this simple model and try to figure out how many pipes you need to compute the equality function. The equality function is one if x equals y and it's zero otherwise. So, um, if you figure out some solution, please come talk to me tomorrow. I'm really interested in discussing this kind of question with you. So why am I telling you all this? Where, where's the cryptography in that? Well, it turns out that when you think about these kind of questions, you're actually thinking about a particular attack on a quantum cryptographic protocol. So because a strategy to compute a function in this garden hose model implies an attack on a simple quantum protocol for position verification. And uh, I'm not joking. Um, so in this protocol, actually Alice has a qubit and this qubit should end up either on her side or on Bob's side. And uh, these pipes, they're going to correspond to EPR pairs. These are entangled photons. And um, what you're going to do is, by wiring up these, these pipes, you're actually um, doing bell measurements on these EPR pairs. So all these wires, all these garden hose, pieces of garden hose correspond to bell measurements. And this final measurement you do here is actually teleporting this qubit through the system of entanglement to either one side or the other. Um, so the big question we have if, is whether all attacks in this model actually correspond to such strategies. But this question is wide open and we are currently trying to answer. Um, so the full results will be presented at the upcoming QCrypt conference um, uh, about in a month from now at ETH. Uh, you're all welcome to, to go there and uh, hear some interesting talks. And we hope that the full version will be available on the archives. So thank you. All right.